गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन गुड मॉर्निंग टूडे इज एलेवंथ ऑफ फेब्रवरी माई नेम इज साहिल एंड वेलकम टू द न्यूज पेपर एनालिसिस सो गाइज इन द टूडे इज वीडियो वी विल बी टेकिंग अप द एंटायर एनालिसिस ऑफ द हिंदू न्यूज पेपर विल सी द आर्टिकल्स फ्रॉम द इंडियन एक्सप्रेस एक्सप्लेन सेक्शन एंड द पी डी एफ द टेली द एक्सप्लेनर पी डी एफ दैट विल यूज हेयर यू कैन डाउनलोड द पी डी एफ फ्रॉम द टेलीग्राम चैनल एंड कैन यूज दैट इन योर नोट्स नाउ बिफोर स्टार्टिंग अप फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स सी द ओवर व्यू ऑफ द न्यूज पेपर एंड लेट्स ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट विच आर्टिकल्स आर इंपॉर्टेंट एंड विच एक्चुअली वच अप्रोच यू शुड फॉलो सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स सी द इंडियन एक्सप्रेस एक्सप्लेन सेक्शन नाउ गाइज सी द कोर्ट रूलिंग्स ऑन हिजाब नाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल इज कमिंग एवरी डे इन ऑल ऑफ द न्यूज पेपर इन हिंदू इट इज कमिंग इन इंडियन एक्सप्रेस इट इज कमिंग नाउ दिस हिजाब कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी दैट हैड हैपन्ड इन टू द कर्नाटका इट इज बींग हर्ड बाय द कर्नाटका हाई कोर्ट एंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर डायरेक्शन अप टिल नाउ नथिंग हैज कम आउट एंड एवरी डे द सेम कंटेंट इज बींग रिपीटेड इवन द न्यूज पेपर गाइज ऑल्सो डोंट हैव मच ऑफ चॉइस हेयर नाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर एंटायर कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी फ्रॉम द स्क्रैच एंड अलॉन्ग विद ऑल ऑफ द डायमेंशन दैट आर देयर ऑलरेडी वी हैव सीन जस्ट अ कपल ऑफ डेज बैक ऑन द फिफ्थ ऑफ फेब्रवरी एट टेन फोर्टी टू okay so this is the same this is the development after that nothing has happened so if you have seen please don't go beyond this particular thing not important not relevant for our examination then the case of mp judicial officer who accused high court judge nothing personal details etc has been given then moving on to the hindu newspaper so in the hindu newspaper guys here we can see that the first page it is talking about the political news uh, the uh, basically fine uh, here the up chief minister had said that uh, up uh, if you will not vote then we might become the kerala or such kind of things not important article with respect to the examination then again restore peace into the high court says in the hijab case again the same thing is there please don't go into this particular direction then guys the other articles fine not important for our paper so please ignore it now after that uh, see the text and the context section is also there now in the text and the context section we find this particular thing creating a sun in the lab so what this article is all about this article is about the fusion test okay the fusion test that has happened that has been committed by the jet just yesterday we have taken this particular thing so guys on uh, basically 10 february that is the yesterday at 1950 already this entire issue we have discussed fine then further moving on after that uh, in the text and the context second page india is run at the oscar so again this thing has been provided then moving to the city section now in the city section guys as we move the draft policy for delivery of services to switch to e vehicles this particular article is important one we will be seeing that what has been provided so with respect to the examinations we'll see this particular thing okay then after that delhi government ask center for rupees 11 crore from nirbhaya fund so the nirbhaya fund was constituted after the after the nirbhaya rape case that had happened and in order to provide the security to the women in public transport installing the cctv into the public buses etc 1000 crore rupees fund actually was started as the nirbhaya fund fine so this was that about after that moving on after that guys um, just advertisements etc are there we reach directly to the editorial section now in the editorial section the first article is talking about the local job laws that raise the constitutional question okay so recently there has been a controversy because of the haryana's law reserving the 75% of the seats we'll see this article then further moving on um, nmsp scheme to transform india's agriculture sector so there are certain suggestions with respect to the MP re msp reforms that has been mentioned we'll see this article then the basically wrong signal okay so this particular article is talking about recent kerala high court's decision so what had happened we have seen this article that there is a news channel a malayalam news channel was there that news channels uh, publication or airing was suspended by the government because government said that security clearance was not given then uh, the kerala high court actually put a stay and now the kerala high court said that okay government is justified it government is not allowing that news channel so this these kind of things the article had said is not good okay in a democracy then further moving on frozen by uncertainty so this is the uh, recently the monetary policy committee mpc it has come out with their outlook so we'll see this particular thing what has been provided then is the institution of governor subverting the fed 
fundamental structure so we will see what are the pro uh, issues that have been provided into this particular article and then guys further moving on there are the political news etc that are there okay please don't go into that particular thing assembly polls etc fine they are mentioned then guys further moving on supreme court says too early to intervene into the karnataka hijab controversy so guys if you have not seen the article today itself i have just mentioned timestamp see that hijab controversy issue that is going in karnataka as i said that karnataka high court is hearing that particular case okay so supreme court basically said that okay we will not intervene first of all we'll see that where the karnataka high court is going okay so they will not intervene just that thing has been provided beyond that nothing is there into this article then guys after that uh, other articles okay uh, after that uh, rising uh, the cases etc that has been there not important then on the world's page fine uh, yesterday actually we have seen the article with respect to the uh, russia and all these things which are going on at oh, sorry day before the yesterday so russia launches belarus military drills russia's intervention into the ukraine and into the eastern europe is going on fine why russia is doing this particular thing russia is doing this particular thing to assert their weight in the front of the usa is it clear usa is actually trying to expand the nato's presence into the europe and now it is moving even toward, towards the eastern europe so basically russia wants to flex russia wants to show its kind of a might and all these particular things are part of that only everyday developments not important then indo pacific region will share the century so basically into the indo pacific region there are many of the alliances that are being made okay there is a quad actually the quadrilateral security dialogue though the members don't call it as an alliance okay the member says that it is not a military grouping it is just a kind of a vision of the shared democracies but the china calls that okay this quad is a military alliance is it clear and all these kind of things are there so indo pacific region is a uh, indo pacific region will shape the century why indo-pacific will shape the century see indo-pacific number one indo-pacific it has the population okay and being population indo-pacific has the market after that indo-pacific lies at, at, at a juncture where the crucial trade lanes passes from okay so all these particular reasons are there that indo-pacific has become very important and most importantly into the indo-pacific what has happened there is a china now the china is contending for the superpower st status and to counter china also the western world has a particular interest in indo-pacific it is looking for the partners fine okay but everyday statement being made by a minister being made by any of the dignitary not important okay fine uh uk police widens net after the party gate photo of the pm so it is being said that when the lockdown was going on into the uk the uh, basically even the prime minister and the uh, and the high ranking officials ministers they were uh, doing the parties okay lockdown violation was going on this party gate scandal has become a very big scam now see uh, just this particular article we, we can compare we can compare the political political um, um, political processes in india versus the political processes into the uk see a kind of a difference comes between a young democracy and between a matured democracy now no democracy is that okay it has become completely matured no that will never happen but comparatively india is a young democracy we find this particular thing that there are the lockdown restrictions that are going on but even into the face of the lockdown restriction every day there are the uh, political basically the political leaders they are not following the norms they are going out okay so much of the violations are there nobody talks about it in the uk fine there were some private parties that were held okay behind the doors okay and now this particular thing had come and it actually have become such a big scandal okay it has become such a big scam and even the talks for the resignation are going on is it clear or not why because they were doing the party during this particular time now though they say that okay it was not there but see this is the uh, differences that are there after that guys moving on further then uh, in the business section rbi retains status quo to spur growth so we'll see this particular article then the corporate trends etc have been given cryptos are a threat to financial stability uh, rbi governor fine so on to the cryptocurrencies we have already seen into the budget coverage that the 30 percent tax has been imposed but government had not said that on cryptocurrencies they are holding a positive outlook neither they had said that they will be legalized into the future still the government 
government has a belief that the cryptocurrencies are a threat to financial stability because they are not backed by any central bank. Cryptocurrencies therefore are a threat, okay, but just a statement has been given and after that the sports page come. So this is the overview and now let's discuss the relevant articles one by one in the detail and guys see every day I am carrying this overview just for the sake that you develop a skill to understand, okay, every news is not to be read thoroughly because in that way we will be giving every day five to six hours onto the newspaper. Ideally you should complete your newspaper within less than two hours, okay, that is something, if possible even less than that. So for that having an understanding is actually very important. Now let's start, so every class what we do, we take up a GS uh, quote, so today we are taking the quote from the Albert Einstein. So Albert Einstein, he says, I believe that virtually all the problems in the world come from inequality of one kind or another. So Albert Einstein has said that the inequality is the root cause of all the problems and if the all other problems have to be resolved, first of all inequality has to be killed. Now guys, particularly when we talk about inequality, it has increased a lot into the times of COVID-19 pandemic. Recently, the Oxfam report, Oxfam report has been released and in Inequality Labs report has been released. Two of the reports, Oxfam report and in, uh, there is one more report that has been released on inequality. Now, basically all these reports, particularly this Oxfam report that has been there, it has said this particular thing that India is one of the most unequal country. Is it clear? And because of the inequality, the people are dying, the hunger, the poverty is persisting. So inequality is to be deterred by the root. Fine, that is something. Now, taking up. Okay, so first of all, the MCQ answers for the yesterday. So MCQ, the first question, the correct answer is D. Okay, just a minute. The correct question, uh, the correct answer is D. Fine, both the statements are correct. Okay, you can just match what you have answered. Then question number two, the correct answer is A. Is it clear or not? You can pause the video for a minute and you can see your answers. You can download this PDF from our Telegram channel. Now taking up the MCQ questions for today. Okay guys, so today's MCQ questions will be from the yesterday's current affairs. Please pause the video and please answer. Okay, please make it as a habit. So the first question we have taken is from the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor. Is it clear? Now this particular thing, why it has been asked? Because yesterday the fusion experiment has been carried and this fusion experiment could be the future of energy. So please read the statements and uh, answer the correct statement. Pause the video read and please answer it. Then the second question, uh, consider the following statements regarding the Interna uh, uh, Indian National Center for Ocean Information Services in COIS. Okay, so read the statements why this has been there because coastal vulnerability index was there, okay, which actually came. Please read the statements and answer it. Okay, that is all. Now let's take the first article. So guys, the first article is uh, basically uh, the article that is the government draft policy for delivery services to switch to e-vehicles. Now, first of all, where this particular article will be important. This article will be important in GS paper number two, GS paper number two, developmental issues, developmental issues, government schemes, as well as it will be important in GS paper number three. In GS paper number three, fine, public mobility, public mobility, public mobility as well as this particular article will also be important into the section of environment. Environment, fine. Now, first of all, let's see the background. Let's see the background. So guys, the background goes like this, that every year around the month of the November, there is a pollution problem that Delhi sees. And because of that particular thing, the National Green Tribunal as well as Supreme Court had said that North India, it turns into a gas chamber. And because it turns into a gas chamber, the citizens article number 21, that is the right to life is getting violated. Right to life not only entails the physical, uh, the not entails the right only for mere existence but a dignified existence and into that right to clean air right to clean air clean surrounding is implicit fine this is actually going on now when we talk about the root cause of the problem into the north delhi particularly into the pollution why pollution is there now fine uh, beyond this particular article i am just taking one more attachment from indian express so it has been found that they into the north india okay the most of the pollution it is
is because of the vehicular emission that is there. According to a report by the Center for Science and Environment (CSC), it has been said that vehicular emission contribute highest share to PM 2.5 levels, particulate matter 2.5. Largest is coming from vehicular pollution. Now, this particular report has been sourced from the Decision Support System, which has been developed by the Indian Institute of Tropical Metrology. Now, this particular Decision Support System has specifically been developed to identify the various sources of pollution in Delhi. Now, the maximum pollution, okay, it is coming from the vehicles, okay, around 50 to 50 to 53 percent pollution is from vehicles. Then there are the household sources, industry is there, construction is there, and all these particular way. So, therefore, controlling the vehicular emission is very much important. Now, what government has done? Actually, government had come out with a draft policy, and into this particular draft policy, it has been provided that the cab aggregators, food, food, food delivery platforms and other doorstep delivery platforms, they have to mandatorily switch their vehicle fleet to the electronic vehicles in a phased manner. Now, what is the phased manner? It has been provided that once this particular scheme will be notified, within three months, the cab aggregators and delivery service, they need to make sure that the 10% of their two-wheelers and 5% of their four-wheelers are electric and then by March 2023, March 2023, they need to make sure that 50% of their two-wheelers and 20 25% of four wheelers are electric. Now, understand this particular thing. You need not to go too much into the nitty gritties, reading that, okay, which date, how much percentage of vehicle. No, that is not important. But just understand that this thing could be provided as a case study that what government is doing to control the problem of pollution. So it can be used as a case study as well as it can be used as a reference point that what are the steps that have been taken and it can be used to authenticate your answers. So this will be the utility. Now, guys, even in through the entire pro India, if we see the vehicle remission actually is a very big contributor of pollution. So these kind of schemes can be taken by the uh, governments at the other states also. Now, there will be some indirect benefits of this particular scheme that will come. Number one, it will reduce the pollution problem into the immediate. After that, into the long term, guys, what will happen as the e-mobility, electronic mobility is being focused, it can give an impetus to the domestic industries of India so that they can come out with the uh, four wheelers, electric four wheelers, electric two wheelers, because there is a very big market for that particular thing. Moreover, it will also help Help us to reach, reach the promise that we have made into the COP26. So in COP26 in Glasgow, India had said that by 2070, India will achieve the carbon neutrality. Carbon neutrality means that whatever emission it is happening, the same emission will absorb also. So carbon neutrality target by 2070, it entails that the e-mobility needs to be there. So all these particular things will be uh, will be helped by such kind of initiatives. So this is a kind of a multi-dimension that can be there. That is about it. Now moving to the next article. Now, frozen by uncertainty and one more article, RBI retains the status quo to spur growth. So this, both these articles are from the Hindu newspaper and they are talking about recently released monetary policy committees and their decision on the inflation. Now, first of all, guys, understand this particular thing that there is actually a kind of a background that is there. Background. So what is this background? See, background is actually like this. See. They are, there are two competing priorities right now. On one hand, there is the growth. On one hand, there is the growth. On another hand, there is the inflation. Now, why growth, first of all? Because, first of all, the pandemic, the pandemic impacted the economic growth. After that, economic growth was actually recovering. But now this Omicron virus came. And after this Omicron variant that came, again, there was the growth prospects that went down. Even the Reserve Bank of India had said that the growth which government had promised into the economic survey, which has just been released, even that growth we will not be able to achieve. Is it clear? Because economic prospects are very much weak. Now, so therefore, emphasizing the growth becomes very much important. Now, guys, when you want to emphasize the growth, what do you need to do? You need to pump the money into the economy so that this particular money reaches the people and the people by this particular money, they can raise the aggregate demand. Okay. And by that aggregate demand, what will happen? The impetus will be given to the industries. There will be the supply that has to be increased and much of the supply will again hire more new people more no new raw material will be procured all these things will come so pumping the money in economy is very much important is it clear 
during as the pumping of money is there money is to be pumped there are two things that can be done number one government will increase their expenditure government will increase their expenditure both the revenue expenditure as well as capital expenditure second is that the bank's interest rate bank's interest rate they are needed to be kept in a moderate level the interest rate needs to be lowered so this is the growth however at the same time the problem of inflation is there now now what is the problem of inflation there is the price rise that is happening now because the inflation is going on now the classic strategy to control the inflation is to reduce the money supply into economy less money if it will be there what will happen the unnecessarily demands will not be made and so money is to be reduced now how to basically reduce the money supply the excess money one thing what we can do actually is that we need to increase the interest rate we need to increase the interest rate so controlling inflation we have to increase interest rate but bringing growth we have to reduce the interest rate what you can see here that if we do one other will compromised if we do other the first will compromised what is to be emphasized will you emphasize growth or will you emphasize controlling the inflation now see actually inflation has become even a very big problem because what had happened first of all the crude prices into the international market they have increased since 2014 since 2014 the highest mark into the crude oil price we are seeing right now the a very big part of the fuel we actually import okay so we are importing the fuel if the prices have increased what will happen the lending price of the crude in india will increase and ultimately the petrol diesels price will increase and everything is being delivered by the trucks etc or most of the things are being dribbled dri delivered by the trucks etc so the inflation is bound to rise so inflation is to be controlled also but then growth is also there so a sticky situation has developed now the monetary policy committee monetary policy committee is the organization which has been given a mandate that they will decide on to the inflation now monetary policy committee has decided that what we are going to do we will leave the interest rates unchanged we will leave the interest rates unchanged we will not increase the interest rate because as it was expected please control the inflation and for controlling increase the interest rate they say that no will not increase the interest rate why because right now the growth is more important so growth has actually been favored now rbi they have said that the gdp expansion in 2022 2023 is actually going to be around 7.8 percent actually it is lower than what was said in the economic survey which just has been released 10 days back economic survey said that 8 percent to 8.5 percent gdp growth rate will be there now when we see right now into the india the private consumption okay actually i told you it is a mainstay of the domestic demand okay but guys we see that there are a lot of problems private consumption is not coming and now to give it an impetus we are not increasing the interest rates so this is something that has happened now guys as i have discussed about this monetary policy now monetary policy committee sorry so monetary policy committee what is the status of it so monetary policy committee it is a statutory and institutional framework fine which has been created it is a statutory body so it is designed under a law so monetary policy committee is under the Reserve Bank of India Act 1934 and Monetary Policy Committee is given a target for maintaining the price stability, inflation as well as at the same time the growth is also to be kept into the mind. Now this Monetary Policy Committee, it was created after 2014 after the recommendation by the Urjit Patel Committee. Is it clear? Now the Monetary Policy Committee has been given a mandate that you need to keep the inflation in the band of 2 to 6% in the band of 2 to 6%. Now inflation is going around 6 percent which is the highest tolerance limit now when we talk about the monetary policy committee its chairman is the governor of the rbi he will be the chairman of the committee and then the members the committee will comprise six members okay including the chairman three members will be the officials of the rbi and three external members will be there who will be nominated by the government of india the finance minister will not be a member of this mpc this is something okay already the question have been asked onto the mpc in prelims examination also so this is guys all about this particular development now moving to the next article local job laws that raise constitutional questions now what this particular article is see this article is talking about the critical assessment of recent uh, development that has happened in the state of haryana where they have said that the 75 percent of the jobs 75 percent of the jobs into the private sector 
इन टू द प्राइवेट सेक्टर दे आर टू बी रिजर्व फॉर द लोकल पीपल ऑफ हरियाणा और द पीपल हु आर डोमिसाइल्ड इन हरियाणा सो फॉर देम द जॉब्स आर बींग रिजर्व पीपल डोमिसाइल्ड इन हरियाणा नाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल विल बी इंपॉर्टेंट इन जी एस पेपर नंबर वन जी एस पेपर नंबर वन इशूज ऑफ रीजनलिज्म जी एस पेपर नंबर वन इशूज ऑफ रीजनलिज्म इज इट क्लियर सो दैट इज समथिंग विच इज देयर नाउ बिफोर गोइंग इन टू दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल लेट्स टेक सम ऑफ द बैकग्राउंड फर्स्ट बैकग्राउंड फर्स्ट सी द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ रीजनलिज्म सी रीजनलिज्म इज नॉट ऑलवेज अ प्रॉब्लम रीजनलिज्म वट इज रीजनलिज्म रीजनलिज्म इज द लव एंड लॉयल्टी टूवर्ड्स योर रीजन towards your region now what happen regionalism can be synchronized with the national interest if regionalism and national interest are aligned not at all a problem but sometimes the regionalism will go against the national interest and then the regionalism will become a problem now guys what happens basically many a times the politicians and political parties try to take the advantage of regionalism what they do they come out with the politics of nativism politics of nativism now what is this politics of nativism let's understand this thing politics of nativism see basically the political parties many a times they are not able to bring the enough of the economic opportunities they are not able to solve the problem of employment and because these problems are not being solved and the youth wants the solution for it what happens the politics politics politicians they will say that the problem of unemployment is there economic problem is there because the outside people outside people had come and they have taken your resources and then they promote the politics of nativism and in politics of nativism, Nativism, us versus them, and such kind of notions are emboldened. This thing is going on. Is it clear? One thing. Now, as a part of this politics of nativism, what happen? These kind of laws also come where the jobs are reserved only for the local people, only for the native people. So this is something broad kind of thing that you need to keep in your mind. Now, further moving on. So what had happened? I already told you that recently the Haryana government, Haryana government, they had come out with their Haryana State Employment of Local Candidates Act, where 75% of the jobs in the private sector it has been reserved for the local resident. Now the government had provided that the exemptions can also be given. Okay, exemptions can be given to the new startups. Okay, to the IT enabled services, information technology enabled services. Okay, some short term employment, farm labors, domestic work, promotion. So or promotion and transfer. Some uh, basically exceptions can be given. But guys. understand this particular thing that for this particular exception there is a very tedious process that is there now at the same time other states are also coming out with such kind of laws for example the andhra pradesh and jharkhand have also passed certain laws into this particular thing now guys these laws okay all of them have been challenged into the high courts now there are the different different high courts which are hearing this particular matter now basically the supreme court has two options supreme court has two options number 1 the supreme court can call all these petitions from the different different high court to itself and can decide on to the matter whether it is constitutional or the supreme court will wait that let's uh, other high courts come out with their ruling and then we'll see what is happening so right now the supreme court has not intervened and the different different high courts are really are basically dealing with this particular matter now let's analyze analyze the constitutional challenges that had come because of these particular laws so constitutional challenge number 1 is that it is the violation of article number 19 sub clause 1 sub clause g now what is this article 19 sub clause 1 sub clause g it gives the freedom to carry out any occupation trade or business okay now the article provides that whatever trade you want you can do and at the same time right to residence has also been given into the fundamental right so i have right to residence i can live at any place and i can do any trade any occupation so if we combine both of these laws what happen you get a right that you can go in some another state and carry a trade there you can do a job there it is your fundamental right but the what happened the state governments are using using uh, the reasonable restrictions clause and actually they are impacting this fundamental right now guys see first of all when we talk about there are certain of the judgments that are there okay in 2002 there came the tma pi foundation case now the tma pi foundation case supreme court stated that private educational institution have autonomy in their administration and management okay whatever the private educational institution want they have autonomy they can decide on to the policies 
However, after that, in uh, in 2005, there was the PM Inamdar case. Okay, into the PM Inamdar case, it provided this thing that reservation cannot be mandated on educational institution that do not receive the financial aid from the state. Only those institution can go for reservation which are receiving some aid. But what happened? Government came with an amendment in 2005, and by this particular amendment, government said that even into the private educational institution, the reservation can be carried. Reservation can be mandated in private educational institution now if you see in all of these cases the reservation is in in educational institution not into the jobs not into the private enterprises but what has happened the state governments are not understanding this particular thing this is one of the point that has been made by this article second thing that comes here is that Basically, there is article number 16 of the constitution. Article number 16 provides that there needs to be the equality of opportunity for all the citizens in public employment. And it has been said that there cannot be any discrimination. Many grounds are there. Even the place of birth and place of residence is a ground on which the uh, basically discrimination cannot be made. Is it clear or not? And however, however, if, if there is a kind of a specific kind of a case, parliament has a power that it can mandate that the residence uh, can be a condition. Parliament can come out with a law. Now guys, what had happened? Basically, if we first of all talk about the article number 16, article number 16 is providing uh, it is providing it actually is for the public employment and not for the private sector jobs is it clear it is for public employment not for a private sector jobs so therefore what is the logic the logic is this that if you want to mandate residence as a condition then that condition can only be mandated for the public sector jobs not for the private sector jobs what haryana has done they had mandated the reservation for the private sector job so they did not had power simply because parliament can make the law but in public sector second thing is that second thing is that who can make a law law can be made by the parliament and not by the state legislature what had happened into the haryana into the haryana the law has been passed by the state legislature so again it is going against the constitution even the supreme court judgment is there of 2002 supreme court in 2002 provided that if the preference is to be given to the applicants from a particular region okay okay uh, if uh, if uh, sorry Supreme Court in 2002 provided particularly into the matter of Rajasthan that giving the preference to the applicants of particular region, it is unconstitutional. Fine. So Supreme Court have already provided that such kind of thing cannot be done. Secondly, it has been provided that if reservation has to be given to the backward class of citizens, okay, it can be onto their status of development. That is the backwardness. It cannot be onto the status of their residence or domicile. What had happened into the Haryana? The reservation is not given on backwardness. It is given on residence, but it cannot be the case. This is something. Then the next thing is that the quantum of reservation, 75% reservation, is it allowed? Now, Indra Sahani judgment of 1992 is there. Indra Sahani judgment of 1992 provides that no reservation maximum limit could be 50 percent but where here what had happened 75 percent limit is there now in the indra sahani judgment and many other judgments which had come it has been said that if you have to breach this 50 percent limit then there needs to be some very special and compelling reasons fine for example there are some far-flung and remote areas okay where the population may need to be treated out something very differently there you can come out with such kind of laws okay but extreme caution is needed to be there fine but haryana neither the population is living into the far flung areas they are near the ncr there is a caution also that not has been adopted moreover in Tilanga, for Tilangana in 2017, Rajasthan 2019, Maharashtra 2018, they have passed many of the laws which are breaching this 50% limit. Okay, now recently what had happened, we have covered this also in our newspaper analysis that Maharashtra also proposed the reservation for the Maratha population. Now, the Mar uh, Marathas. Now, this particular thing has been struck by the Supreme Court in 2021 that it actually breached the 50% limit. So, by that particular logic, these things might be challenged into the court of law. So, now, therefore what has been provided the conclusion goes like this that when we talk about the india as a nation india as a nation basically shares a 
shares a, a unified identity is it clear you have under article number 19 that the entire territory belongs to you there cannot be discrimination on to the basis of your regional aff affinities so into these particular things the constitutional spirit is to be respected by the government and uh, the adverse economic policies that are coming such as 75 percent reservation they are not only going against the constitution rather there is also a problem that it actually impacts the ease of doing business in india when you will come out with such kind of a restrictions what will happen the mncs they might not be feeling confident to start their uh, is, uh, to, to start their establishments to start their projects so this is something that is there now moving to the next article now this particular article guys it is talking about the msp reforms that is needed in india okay now basically the msp it has been again into the news why msp is into the news because see few days back uh, I, I, I'll say a couple of months back what happened the government rolled back the agricultural reform law that was passed in 2020 so those agricultural bills have been rolled back at that point of a time government provided to the farmer unions a kind of a promise that we will make a law on MSP however it has not happened so MSP has been into the news now guys first of all when we talk about the MSP MSP what it is it stands for minimum support price it stands for minimum support price and it will be important in GS paper number three issues related to the agriculture GS paper number three issues related to the agriculture now MSP minimum support price is a price guarantee that is given by the government to the farmer that let's say the MSP is announced 1000 rupees for wheat okay government says that if you want to sell your wheat in open market you can do that but if you want you can come to us and you can sell this wheat at 1000 rupees to us also is it clear so this is the msp that is there now in msp there is an open procurement that happens what is the meaning of open procurement it means that whatever crop will be offered by the farmer the entire crop will be taken by the government there is no limit that okay we will take only 100 ton 200 ton no it is an open procurement scheme that is there now when we talk about the MSP minimum support price it actually serves the three purposes number one number one MSP could serve uh, the, as a price stabilization uh, in the food grain market. Now, what is this price stabilization? I'll just tell you in one minute. Secondly, it helps us in providing the income support to the farmers. And thirdly, it is a mechanism for coping the indebtedness of the farmer. Okay, now let's understand all of these one by one. Number one, the price stabilization. Now, guys, see this particular thing. Sometimes what can happen in the market, let's say that the food grains are not there in the market food grains are not there then what will happen the demand and the supply balance will break down okay see if the food grains are not there supply will not be there but the demand will be constant people will need food to eat every day now supply is not there demand is same what will happen the price of the food grain will increase a lot and because of this particular thing food inflation will come hungry people poor people will not be able to afford the food it is a humanitarian concern that will come so therefore what government does government actually maintains a buffer government government entails, actually entail, uh, holds a buffer stock. Now, if let's say there is a kind of a uh, supply it is going down, then government can release the food grains out of this particular buffer stock into the market. Again, the supply has come, the price will get destabilized. Secondly, guys, what is there? As a price of this price stabilization, government has also come out with is Essential Commodities Act 1955. Now, under the Essential Commodities Act, certain commodities, they have been given the status of essential commodities. They cannot be hoarded, they cannot be stocked, etc. So, government is carrying the price stabilization into the grains by two things. Number one, Essential Commodities Act, you cannot hold the food grains and cannot create the artificial uh, disbalance into the supply and demand and secondly if any gap is there from the food that we have already procured from the MSP will release that grain into the market and the balance will be achieved back this is something that has happened now guys when we talk about the buffer stock policy I already told you that government procures then that food is stored as a buffer stock now this particular food will be number this particular food that we are procuring the grain that we are procuring into the buffer stock it will a be given to the people through PDS it will be a give to, given to the people through PDS now into the PDS at subsidized prices 3 rupees 2 rupees 1 rupees we will be giving them fine secondly at the emergency it will be released okay now this is there now guys understand this particular thing that 
uh, this particular intervention has come okay now basically when we came from to the msp we came to the msp we started to give the prize guarantee government in 1960s started this particular phenomena but after that guys what had happened our emphasis has not been properly balanced basically we gave much higher msp to the rices to the wheat etc what happened the farmer became more positive towards the right uh, rice and wheat farmer adopted the high yield variety seeds okay and by by using some uh, another high input kind of methods what happened they started to grow these kind of crops green revolution provided a much of a impetus fine but at the same time under the msp there are 20 other crops particularly the millets coarse cereals pulses oil seeds many of them are there which have not been covered and because the msp is for many other crops 20 important crops it msp is not being given farmers are not motivated to grow them what had happened in our india the uh, the cropping pattern has become skewed we are growing more rice and wheat and not other pulses etc we become a more cereal centric nation this is one problem that had happened msp had led to a skewed cropping pattern in india now when we talk about guys around 68 percent of indian agriculture is rain fed agriculture rain fed agriculture it means that the, they depend on to the rain for their agriculture irrigation facilities are not properly developed and into the rain fed rain fed belt of india fine growing the we growing the rice etc is not an option they actually grow these coarse cereals the millets okay and all such kind of things so giving the msp for such kind of crops is actually very much important fine today we are giving the msp for the 23 crops but we need to expand we need to give expand um, this particular umbrella now the way ahead has been provided number one we need to first of all increase the list of these 23 crops other crops are to be brought here secondly there is a flexible arrangement that is there what is this flexible arrangement see what we are doing we are announcing one msp for example 1000 rupees msp for the wheat everybody will be given this 1000 rupees price now the article suggests that you should not come out with this 1000 rather you come out with a band let's say 800 to 1000 now what is this meaning of this band it is said that okay it is not any price can be given it will depend on to the harvest that had happened let's say if that the harvest has been good then so uh, if, if the if the harvest has been bad okay then we will be giving a kind of a better price to support the farmer if the harvest has been good then the farmer can say sell it at other price also or in any way so just it has been provided that come out with a band and seeing the harvest seeing the prevailing agricultural market prices etc offer any one price out of this particular band this is one thing that has been provided then after has been provided that some of the selected coarse grains they can be provided at the upper price in out of this particular band to promote their agriculture to promote their growing into the rain fed areas it has been provided okay then the next thing that has been provided is that basically uh, climate friendly cropping patterns are needed to be promoted through the msp is it clear in particular areas particularly crops are more suitable in Haryana and in Punjab, the paddy is not suitable. The paddy is not suitable because the rainfall is not there. But MSP for paddy is actually provided. And what happens? The farmer are using the groundwater and they are growing the paddy, which is basically reducing the water table and all such kind of things. So use the MSP to promote the climate friendly cropping patterns. Is it clear or not? Fine. This is something that has been provided. Moreover, guys, there is one more thing also that wide coverage of MSP through the income support will actually have a will, will bring the positive economic externalities now what is this positive economic externalities see it is provided that you give msp for more crops for giving msp for more crops more farmers will come into the msp umbrella when the farmers will receive an income assurance the farmers will use that particular money to raise more and more demand into the rural areas and when rural demand will increase what will happen at the end of the day entire indian economic scenario will improve this is something that has been provided fine moreover it will also show solidarity among the towards the farmer community now guys after that it has been provided that <coughs> now now this particular article it is providing this particular thing that additional cost of a wider msp okay uh, of the total grains produced some 40 to 50 percent okay now what this particular point is providing now the article actually is advocating that what we do we actually are selecting only few crops under the msp for which 
we gave it other crops are not under the msp article is suggesting that come out with a universal msp okay bring almost all the crops under the msp if all the crops will come under the msp what will happen see actually the farmer whatever the farmer is growing the 45 to 50 percent of that particular crop the farmer will use for the self-consumption and remaining 45 to 50 percent crop will be the market surplus now some of this will go to the private and then another part will go to the government which the government will procure by the msp now it has been said that if we take the cost that is needed to procure all these grains the article says that the cost is around 5 lakh crore rupees but the government says that the cost will be 17 lakh crore rupees so actually cost is less fine so this has been said but if government procure all the crops by the msp what will happen it will benefit directly 50 percent of the population directly and 25 to 20 percent population indirectly 70 percent of the india's citizen will get the benefit of this particular thing so therefore this is something that has been suggested by the government okay and one more reform is there into the msp okay and it is this that what we can do <coughs> the agricultural debt is a very big problem in india the farmers are taking the money from the private money lenders it is a problem so the article suggests that what we can do we can link the we can link the selling of grains under the MSP with the provision of bank credit. So let's say that there is a small farmer. There is a small farmer. He is selling let's say 100 kg of wheat to the government at the MSP. Is it clear? So now what we need to do, we need to give this particular farmer a certificate that this farmer is actually from last few years selling 100 kg of wheat. So he, the farmer has a potential of growing 100 kg of wheat. So by this particular uh, by this particular certificate, what can farmer do? Farmer before growing, before sowing can take the loan from the bank that, okay, you see my track record. Every year I am selling around 100 kg of wheat. So this is my economic potential. So please give me the loan. So this is also one particular innovative way in which the farmer's condition can be improved clear so guys all these are the points that calls for the reform into the msp now msp is directly important in juice paper number three agriculture related topics so guys please <clears throat> note down these particular things so that is all about the article and now moving to the next article now is the institution of governor subverting the federal structure Fine. This article will be important for our GS paper number two, the federal issues, federal issues and issues related to the constitutions and third, the political controversies, clear, for political issues more or less. Now see, first of all, the background, it goes like this, that now if we see between the chief minister and the governor, there is the controversy that is going on. Now, you see the chief minister and you see the governor. Governor is actually basic. Governor has been called many a times as the agent of the center because the central government through the president is actually appointing the governor. So, governor is the representative of the central government who is posted into the state. Now, many a times when the state is being ruled by some different party and the union is being ruled by some different party, what happens? The confrontation and the friction can improve because the state which is being ruled by some other party they will say that the center through the governor is trying to interfere into their internal matters now if we see the controversy is going on in the kerala it is going into the west bengal then in the tamil nadu the controversy is going on even in the maharashtra the controversy is going on particularly when we talk about the tamil nadu in tamil nadu on to the need bill the controversy is going on just already we have done where the government governor returned the need bill to the assembly assembly has again passed this particular bill and had given it to the governor now what governor will do this is a controversy into the west bengal guys what had happened west bengal the governor openly came out in the public Public and said that the government chief minister and the government of West Bengal they are not sharing with me the expenditure that they have done during the time of pandemic article 167 mandates that they have to give me the account but they are not doing that particular thing so in the West Bengal there is a problem that is going on moreover guys into the West Bengal on many of the politicians uh, basically uh, representatives into the West Bengal government what had happened there the CBI inquiry had started and and it has been it is being said that it has been initiated by the governor's initiative so chief minister and the elected government says that the governor is on a revenge spree such kind of thing is there in kerala guys what had happened in kerala there is a controversy going on to the chancellor's issue okay so basically uh, 
uh, the chancellor of the university in a state is governor and then he can appoint the vice chancellor so one of a vice chancellor were appointed in the kannur university fine the appointment happened but then the governor said that i have done this thing because of a political pressure that was created on me so because of all these particular thing guys there are the controversies that are going on now every controversy is not important now understand what this article says article says that in a democracy where there is a non elected head of the state for example governor is a non elected head of the state and when there is a elected head of the government for example the chief minister is a elected head of the government at the level of center if you go prime minister is elected head and the president is a non elected head of the state so when there is there are two heads then what will happen a different perspectives can be there on to the legislative administrative and political matters this can happen and this is quite natural now guys it has been said that when we talk about that the level of center the president of india is there who is an indirect elected functionary now the president because he is an indirectly elected functionary he has an opportunity that he always keep the constitution constitution into the mind he can take the tough decisions the decision that might not be liked by the people but are actually going into the line of constitution so president holds an important opinion being a unelected representative he can take a view which is not popular with the government or with the public and can stand for that so therefore guys as president is upholding the constitutional spirit the president's view become very much important and president's view cannot be ignored by the same logic the governor's view into the state is also very much important governor can hold the constitutional provisions and can act into the line of constitution so governor is also very much important but guys at the same time when we are into the democracy ultimately who will be winning or ultimately whose decision will prevail ultimately the elected governor government will have the final say into the matter elected government will have the final say into the matter moreover in the constitution it has been provided that article 163 clearly provides that the governor will always be bound by the aid and advice of the council of minister governor will be bound by the aid and advice of the council of minister so therefore the elected government is supreme now though government is <coughs> running in the name of president or governor real power is with the elected wing now into this particular spirit guys the governor and the chief ministers into the different different state they need to come at a truce governor needs to understand that the elected government cannot be undermined but at the same time elected government needs to understand that the governor they are representing a constitutional authority and sometimes their decision might be tough but actually are important in order to keep the constitutional spirit alive now i told you that in tamil nadu the controversy is going on to the neat okay now governor have a view that the neat exemption should not be given out to the neat tamil nadu government want that give us the exemption from the neat we don't want it so this has become a difference of opinion now the tamil nadu government they passed a legislation that we want an exemption from the neat the, what happened the governor returned that particular bill to the gover government okay now for one governor for one time the governor can return the bill but if second time the bill will be presented to the governor then the governor cannot return the bill however however if the bill is on any particular matter where the central law is already existing or it might come in violation with the central law then the governor can refer to the bill to the president of india so now as the second time the bill has been given either the governor will give the assent or will give the bill to the president or might withhold the assent returning is not an option now it has been said that <clears throat> as this particular bill is there government has to flag it before the president okay and the president will take the final decision now in the constitution of india we find that there is a pro center tilt which is there there is a pro center tilt that has been there now this pro center tilt was actually important in order to preserve the national unity and national integrity this has been there but guys this particular pro central tilt should not become a bone of contention it should not be a thing which is a dividing rather at the same time the governments at the level of center fine government at the level of state they need to come together and the functionaries into the name of chief minister and into the governor also they need to come together and need to work in a cooperative way though usual clashes and criticisms will be there but it should not unnecessarily made a political issue so this is something which is provided in this article so guys with this we come to an end to the today's newspaper analysis fine so that is about the most important articles into the today's newspaper so that is all now we will be meeting tomorrow till then guys please take care of yourselves and please do answer the mcq questions that have been there okay and if you have if if you are liking the initiative please do hit the like button thank you so much